this video is going to be a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to start a real jewelry business if you're on a budget. We're going to go over what kind of jewelry you should be making when you're first starting out, how to make it, we're going to talk about how to manufacture jewelry in China, and whether or not you should do it. We're going to talk about Moist Night jewelry, how much you should be paying per carat, a bunch of other important stuff you guys need to know about how jewelry is made. We're also going to talk about the best ways to create an online store, how to sell jewelry, and much, much more. We have a lot to cover in this video. Let's get right into it. All right, guys. So a lot of you want to get into the jewelry business, and you guys always ask me what is the best way to start if you're starting with a budget of under $1,000. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. First of all, you guys should never ask a jeweler how to get into the jewelry business. Nine out of 10 times, they're going to misguide you and tell you that you need to go to gemology school, intern, and all this other nonsense. And that's completely not true. If you look at almost any famous jeweler, the majority of them are immigrants who started from nothing and built huge brands. And you guys can do the exact same thing. All that you need is some direction. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. First, I want to talk about what what kind of jewelry you should be making if you're on a budget of $1,000 or less. When you guys first start out, I suggest you make silver pendants or silver pendants that have some gold in them. You can also do very small gold pendants and hollow gold pendants. Why pendants? Because pendants are small and don't cost a lot to make. And unlike rings, with which you have to find a buyer who has the exact same size as the ring that you have to sell, people wear pendants regardless of the size. They're universal. You should make pieces that are cheap to make and you should sell them for double what you make them for. As you guys know, jewelry is made from castable resin or wax. Printing waxes with a professional machine will cost you around $10 a wax, and when you're selling jewelry for cheap, it's not worth it to pay that. So you should buy your own printer and make your own waxes. These waxes will cost you under a dollar to print. These printers will always be useful in your business and they're a great investment because you can prototype and make your own waxes anytime you want and you don't have to depend on anyone to make waxes for you. The best printers to use for jewelry making is the Mars Elegoo series of printers. They are by far the easiest to use and they're just great overall printers. You can get a printer for around $200, which is an amazing price. You will also need castable resin. There are many different types of resins to choose from, but personally, I like the Power Resins Dark and the Power Resins Green Burn Resin. Now, let me show you guys how to make your own pieces. We're going to be making this lion pendant in four versions. The first one is going to be pure silver. Then we're going to do a smaller silver version with a 14 karat gold crown. Then we'll do a very small solid 14 karat gold version. And then we're going to do another 14 karat gold version, but this one is going to be hollow. The first thing that we're going to do is purchase the 3D file for this pendant. We're going to go on cgtrader.com and download these files right here. So here are the 3D files, and as you guys can see, the crown is separate. Now, let me show you guys the process of how to make these pendants. So the first thing that we're going to do is import the files into the Cheeto Box program, which comes with the printer. We're gonna add the supports and print the file. The next thing that we have to do is add primer to the printing plate. This is a very important step to make sure that you get flawless prints every single time. And now we're gonna print the waxes, which will take about two hours to print. And here are the finished prints right here. The next thing that we're going to do is soak them in alcohol for about two minutes. And after that, we're gonna wash them out with warm water. Next, we're gonna clip all the supports and the pieces ready to be casted. You're going to find a caster in your city and you should be able to cast gold for a few dollars over the spot price and you should be paying two dollars per gram to cast silver. Also, when you guys have a piece that weighs almost nothing, it doesn't really matter if you're paying two dollars or five dollars over the spot price. We're talking about pennies. And here are the casted pieces right here. Here's the first large silver piece. Here's a smaller silver piece with a gold crown. Here's a small gold piece and here's a small hollow gold piece. Next, we're gonna find a polisher and have these polished and assembled. It's really important that you guys find a good polisher and start a relationship with them where they do many pieces for you to give you low prices. You can't pay a lot for labor, especially when you're making silver pieces. Labor is going to be your biggest expense. Labor for these should cost around $25 a piece. So here we have the finished pieces. The big silver lion piece cost us $65 to make. The smaller silver piece with the gold crown cost us $67 to make. The small solid gold piece cost us $164 to make and the hollow gold piece costs us $133 to make. And you guys should sell these for double what it costs you to make them. All right, guys, we're gonna talk about how to manufacture jewelry in China in a second. But first, I wanna talk about building your brand. The next step when starting a jewelry business is to choose a strong brand name that is available on your own domain name, social media, and marketplaces like Etsy and eBay. Your domain is your web identity, and having a site that ends with .store lets your customers know right off the bat that your site is a store and associates your brand with selling. If you look at the top celebrities like Rihanna, Shakira, Michelle Obama, Dude Perfect, and even huge brands like Discord and Emirates, they all have .store domains. And there's a reason for that. When a customer sees a website that ends with .store, it's clear to them that this website is an online store. One million sellers are already using .store store domains. You can get a .store domain on Shopify or you can go to get.store, use my coupon code and get a domain there for only 99 cents. Let me show you guys how easy it is to get a domain. All right guys, so we're going to go to get.store, click buy now, type in the domain that you want. I'm going to type in Slava Jewelry. Click buy now, add to cart and click proceed. Type in the coupon code Slava Store, apply 
As you guys can see, the total is 99 cents. Click place order. This is something that's going to be huge in the e-commerce world, so be sure to get your .store domain. When you first start your business, you should start selling on sites like eBay and Etsy. Here's an example of an Etsy seller selling a similar pendant to the one that we made. This Etsy seller is selling a pure silver line pendant for $130, and this pendant is 100% pure silver. It doesn't have any gold in it. Who do you guys think will get more sales? This pendant right here, or our silver and gold pendant, which costs us $67 to make? I think most people would rather own a pendant that has real gold in it. Now, when you make an eBay, Etsy, or other marketplace stores, another cool thing that you can do is use a .store auto forward using link.store. For example, we have this Etsy seller right here. Instead of putting a long Etsy link, which looks unprofessional in your social media, you can get a short link from link.store and that's going to make it look better. Stores that have short links get a lot more traffic and sales. So be sure to use those in your Etsy and eBay stores. You guys don't want to use long links. Now, I want to talk to you guys about something that's becoming very popular in the jewelry industry, and that's Moissanite jewelry. You guys see people starting Moissanite companies and they're growing into big brands which are getting celebrity collab deals and more. So what exactly is a Moissanite? A Moissanite is a very rare mineral which was discovered a long time ago by a scientist and it is similar to a diamond. It's almost as hard as a diamond and it shines better than a diamond. It even passes a diamond tester. Moissanites are almost impossible to find in nature and all of them are created in a lab. So all Moissanite jewelry and any loose Moissanites are all lab made. Moissanites are extremely cheap. You can get a carrot of loose Moissanites in China for under $5 a carrot. You can also get Moissanites in many different colors. So starting a silver jewelry business with Moissanites is another great way to start a jewelry business. Now let me show you guys something. Let's take a diamond and put it under fire and see what happens. As you guys see, nothing happens to the diamond. Diamonds are made under extreme heat and pressure. Diamonds, Moissanites, rubies, sapphires, and even CZs can be casted in wax and nothing will happen to them. CZs will lose some quality and will not shine as hard after being casted, but that's fine because you will never and should never start any kind of jewelry business with CZs because they're worthless trash. So Chinese companies use robots to set stones like moissanites in wax and so setting costs them nothing. They cast the stones directly in the wax so when the casting comes out it just needs to be polished and the piece is ready. Even some powder resins waxes can be casted with stones. So this is a ring that was made in China and the quality is absolutely top notch. They have quality control and the pieces come out perfect. Don't ever confuse China with cheap quality. This is a pure silver ring which is 18 karat plated with moissanites and it's made flawless. Here's another ring that is made in China and let's compare it to a ring that was made in the jewelry district. The ring that was made in China which is on the left is significantly better quality than the one on the right which was made in the jewelry district. Both rings weigh about 15 grams and so let's see how much I paid to make the ring on the right. I paid $2 for casting so that's $30 plus another $20 for polishing and plating so that's $50. And you guys want to know how much I paid for the ring in China? Let me show you. The Cuban ring on the left, the one without stones, cost me $28. And by the way guys, the real price is even lower than that. I'm not going to disclose it here for obvious reasons, but I just want to show you guys a ballpark so you understand the approximate prices. And the ring with the moissanite stones cost $34.5. And if I was to make that myself, it would cost me $30 just for casting, another $25 for labor. There's 90 stones in the ring, so it would cost me a total of $90 to set the stones. So it would cost me about $145 to make this ring. And yes, you guys can do mixed orders. So if you guys have over $3,000 to start a business, in my opinion, this is the best way to do it. And the best part about it, you can start this kind of business from anywhere in the world. You guys can get everything from rings, to earrings, to necklaces, to pendants manufactured. It doesn't matter if you guys live in America, Africa, Europe, or Antarctica. Anyone can start this type of business. And you can even use third-party warehouses like Shopify and have China ship your inventory directly to the Shopify warehouse, and Shopify will ship directly to customers whenever you get a sale. So you don't have to ship any inventory or even see your products. Everything is 100% automated. And and again, you guys can be doing this from anywhere in the world. So it's semi-passive income. If you guys want to learn how to do all this, be sure to check out my course. I'm going to teach you how to do all of this. That's coming out soon and it's going to be in the description under the video. Now the next thing that I want to talk to you guys about, which is very important, is getting professional photography done for your jewelry. I see so many websites where people just take pictures of their jewelry and it looks horrible. If you guys are going to have a jewelry business, you have to get professional pictures done. You can go to websites such as fastproductphotographyservices.com and get professional quality photos done of your jewelry. Now I want to talk about another very important thing. When you guys first start selling online, you have to have feedback on your Etsy or eBay store. You cannot just have a brand new account with no feedback and start selling expensive jewelry or any jewelry for that matter. You will never get sales like that. This is something that I get emailed about all the time. And when I look at your eBay stores, you guys have no feedbacks. You guys have to build up your accounts by at least selling random stuff on eBay first. When you guys have a good amount of money to work with, then you guys can move on to selling real gold and diamond jewelry. Don't start selling expensive jewelry if you're on a tight budget. When customers click on your store, you have to have a bunch of products already for sale. You cannot just have one item. People want to buy from a business. They don't want to buy from an individual selling one piece of jewelry. So make sure you guys start your business with an inventory of products for sale. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button, subscribe. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one.